Okay, everybody, we are going to make something kind of interesting. If you make a one player game or something that relies on the AI, then you're probably going to want to be able to create a leash for guards. So right now we've got all of our guards sort of uh, kind of just hanging around near this circle here. But if I press this trigger, they'll all start to shuffle their way over to the next trigger point. Just like that. Let's get that guy to shot me. And the point of this is to be able to tell guards where to go based on a trigger, something could be timing, could be a trigger like I've got there or some kind of event that happens. So let's learn how to do that. Okay, as usual, we are inside of UAFN and I'm going to show you the setup of the play area so we can understand what's going on. So the first thing is we have our guards. Now this is just a basic guard spawner. There's nothing exciting going on here. Uh, they put out four shadow characters and um, the spawn radius is 10. So it's this big so they can spawn anywhere inside of this circle. And I think that I probably updated their uh, visibility range so they could see a little bit further. So that they try to shoot me up on the hill, which is way up there. That is the guard spawners. Now, let's take a look at what I've done here. Now, the reason I've made these two shapes here, I've got this inner shape, I've got a ball, and then I've got this outer blue shape. So these are just cylinders that I've made inside of the modeling area of UFN. If you go up into selection mode, landscape mode, foliage, and modeling, inside of modeling, you can make models. So if you didn't know that, now you know. I've got these two different sized uh, cylinder shapes and we've got the ball in the middle. This ball in the middle is actually the guard leash. Now a guard leash is a point that the guard gets leashed to via our code. Now guard leash doesn't actually usually look like a ball like this. I have made it look like this ball. We can do that in the static mesh component and inside of here I've just set it to be sphere. Something that I I, I know what it looks like. You can set it to anything you want. Anything that lives in here you can set it to be a cone. It doesn't matter. But I like the sphere. It to me, yeah, it, it looks visually appealing. You can set it to be whatever you want. So a guard leash is a verse device. Just like with our game manager, it is also a verse device. If we come up here and find our game manager. We can see it is a verse device as well. So the guard leash is something that we're going to make by a code. And then it's visually represented on the stage currently for me as a sphere. So this first leash is where all the guards go to initially. And we'll do that in code. And then the second leash is where they go when we hit the trigger. Now, as I was saying, these two cylinders here are represented of the size to give you an idea visually. You don't have to have these in. I want to give you guys an idea visually of where these guards can go in an inner circle and an outer circle. So within this area, they get to hang out. So minimum and maximum. Keep that in mind because that's what we need to know. Everything else in here is irrelevant. Uh, we've got our loot box from our last tutorial. If you haven't seen that tutorial, definitely check that out. And uh, this is the trigger that we're going to use to make the guards go from one leash to the other. OK, so let's get into verse and see how we do that. So we're inside of verse now. And the first thing that we want to do is make a guard leash. This is the code that makes that happen. It is a custom class. It's going to be a brand new. If you're wondering how to make a game manager for that matter, I have linked a tutorial in the description below that will get you started. Once you've got that we're going to go into our verse explorer. You can see in here I've got all my verse files, but if we want to make a new one, we just right click, add new verse file to project, call it whatever you want, and then create or create empty. And then once you've done that, double click on it. So we're going to double click on our guard leash verse file, and that will open up the file. And then we can see here we've got some things going on. So I've got all kinds of stuff being used, and you're going to find these things as you build out this code. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make a guard leash class, and it's going to take the creative device as its base. Is probably the best way to put it. And then we need two editables. We're going to we actually we don't need two editables. I chose to make these editables so that I can change them later in the game rather than have to come into the code to change them. So my default value for the inner leash, so the small circle, if you remember here, this small circle here is set to 500. So this is in centimeters, so 500 centimeters. And the outer radius one, which is visually represented by the blue, is 1000. And then we have our guards that we're going to add to this particular leash. Now, this may seem kind of confusing, but just follow along briefly as I as I go through this, because essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add guards 
to an array that we are going to keep track of in this particular leash. And we're going to tell those guards what to do here. This guard leash tells them what to do. So we have three main functions that happen here. The apply leash to guard, the remove all guards, and the clear leash on guard. These are all very important. Now you may be wondering where I get this kind of information from. If you want to check in to the tutorials that Epic puts out, they've got that stronghold example. That's where this mainly comes from. You learn a lot from looking at the tutorials. So definitely check those out. So the apply leash to guard takes a agent and that's going to be our guard. So the guard object that comes out of the guard spawner is an agent object. We want to see if it's leashable. So we'll go if, and then we make a variable called leashable and we check the fort character get fort leashable because one of our characters isn't leashable. Our player character is not leashable, but a spawned guard is leashable. So if it is, then take that leashable object and set the leash position to the get transform translation, which is the position of this device, of the device that we're going to place, which in our case, is, is look like looks like a sphere. Okay, so we need to place that on the stage. I'll show you that in a second. Back to verse. And then we want the leash inner radius, which is set here. Now you can put this number in here directly, 500.0 if you really want to, but I find it is far superior to put in an amount here, and each one of these is going to be editable. So it's very, very useful to do it this way. And we want the leash outer radius. And then we add the guard to the array to create keep track of them. We want to keep track of them because we want to be able to remove a leash from a guard. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, we also have a function in here called remove all guards, which I call when we hit the trigger and then it puts them all on the new leash. So that's handy. So we're just essentially going through all the guards and clearing the leash for that guard. So clear leash on guard. And that calls the next function here, which uh, does a print so we can see it's happening. Uh, so we clean up our objects. So the leashable item, again, we get whether or not the character is leashable. It's important to get this because it can fail and we uh, we want to check that. So then we clear the leash and that is a, a function that is within Fortnite. And then we set an option here because we need to remove the first element of our array of guards. And the option just means that because it's failable, we're using this option. We could also do if. Uh, they would also do the same thing. And because it's a variable, we set set. And that's it for the leash. That's the whole leash working. And then because you've done that, so you if you've changed anything like I have, you're going to hit Control Shift B to build. And it's going to say down to the bottom, it says verse build successful. And then we can go back to the game and say push first changes if we made any changes. But the point really here is we go to the content browser inside of Creative Devices and we've got a guard leash here. So we'll go ahead and we'll add another guard leash. And you see how it comes out as this, this computer table kind of thing? Well, we don't we don't need that. So we'll go to the static mesh component and we can just put in here a sphere and make it look like something totally different. And that way, and you see this one doesn't have any texture on it because the materials, the element zero is set to be something. So let's set it to, we can set it to bricks if we want to. Uh, but I set the other ones just white, sort of that look to it, which is kind of neat. But if you have some special ones and you want to be able to differentiate between maybe one's an emergency leash, one's a retreat leash point or something like that, you can sort of differentiate them through their colors on the screen. So now, because this has a position in the world, that is the leash point that it references when it tells a guard over in the guard spawner when they pop out these guys here, that they should go to this leash device. And then look in here, we can see that we have a visible in game, which obviously we want to turn off, enable the game start, definitely. And we can change the radius of the inner and outer movement area if we want to. So we can set this to 10 and um, I don't know, let's set this to like 50. And essentially that'll be just a tiny little circle that they'll be able to live in. So between 10 centimeters away from this object and 50 centimeters away from this object. So they'll really be standing really close there. So if you wanted to lock off a small hallway or a room or something like that, you could leash a guard in there and they'll just stay. And then say the alarm went off and you want them to all to go to a control room, but you can then have the leash set to, you know, say this was the control room area, then you could do that. 
So hopefully that makes some sense. Now let's go into the game manager because we got just a little bit more to go. Don't get too overwhelmed. OK, so inside of our game manager and again, if you don't know what a game manager is, I've got a tutorial link below talking about your main code file that you're going to set stuff up in. In this case, we're using editables. So we've got guard leash one and guard leash two. They are a guard leash object, which is our guard leash here. This is a file this is a device we've created, right? And uh, we just instantiate it just like this so that it's an editable so that when we go back over to our game manager device here, we can see in our list that we have our guard leash one and our guard leash two. And these are set up inside that list there. Right. Then we've got a guards array here. We're keeping track of all those guys. And then we're going to wander down into our on begin. And inside of on begin, we have our guard spawner event catchers. So the spawned event and the eliminated event, we both we want to catch both of those so that we can do a thing. So this at the spawn event, we want to attach a leash. And when they're eliminated, we want to get rid of that leash. So we want to keep track of both of those. OK, let's take a look at the final bit of code that we need to look at, which is the on guard spawned and the on guard eliminated. Right. So if if a guard is spawned, it's going to pass in an agent object and we are going to set the guards array to have this guard in it. And then we go guard leash one because that's our first guard leash. We're going to apply a leash to the guard, which is the guard right here. And that's it, because the rest of the work is done inside of the guard leash verse file, which we've already covered. And then when a guard is eliminated, we want to grab the elimination result, which is a device AI interaction result. We're going to grab the agent, which is going to be the target of that result object. We can also grab the player so we can apply a score or do a thing. And then we're going to grab the guard agent, which is checking to see if it's an actual agent from the guard object here. Now, remember, these are failable, so we have to check them with an if. If it is so, then we do then and we guard leash one clear leash on guard. We also would want to check to see if they have guard leash two on them so we could clear them there as well. And that would call the clear leash on guard. That's it. That's everything that you would need to do to be able to make it so that you could have a guard go from one spot to another on command. Hopefully that's been interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next one.